People call me sometimes and they say, uh, I want some advice on, on getting into goats. And they tell me what their situation is. And well, I've got cattle pasture and, or I've got a few acres. They rarely say I've got a serious brush problem. They rarely say I have a weed problem. Oftentimes it's just, I really want goats or uh, goats are so valuable right now. I just think I should be into that business. And uh, raising other livestock is just proving not to be challenging enough for you. And you need something new to test your character. Um, that would be a great reason to own goats. In our case, it's the commercial targeted grazing operation. It's struggling to find and afford the right pasture. Uh, we don't own much pasture ourselves, so that third one doesn't help us out much. And we started with goats primarily, so we don't know any different. Goats certainly are the best uh, tools for doing targeted grazing. So much more versatile than, than uh, sheep and certainly easier to load and put on a trailer than cattle. And goats utilize vegetation that no, no other animal can use. Um, they do it in places that can't be farmed or shouldn't be farmed. Um, and they, in our case, they offset the use of herbicides and, and chemicals and mechanization that would be disruptive. And they do all that while making this, this amazing meat product. So we've done some great work in this pasture on the locust sprouts. And that's another thing that's not always so obvious. It's not like they can eat a whole locust tree. Well, no, but they can keep 30 of them from ever getting beyond this tall. And, and so that's part of the real value of goats for pasture improvement. We grazed some uh, bean stubble this year. Crop, we tried crop residues for the first time. We're pretty happy with how that went, but we didn't know. Uh, we knew that there, there's not enough nutrition in the pods and the leaves and the stems uh, for them. So we were relying on them to be able to pick up the individual waste beans and, and make use of those. Um, you probably won't be surprised to know that the goats were actually really good at finding those beans on the ground. And so for a while there, they were probably eating very little roughage and almost maybe 90% individual soybeans. Another way you could go is like they do in Haiti. Um, I got to go to Haiti and work with a mission down there who wanted to improve their goat herd because they were trying to get protein to their, the kids in the school uh, that this mission was operating and they wanted to get some protein in the diets of these kids every day. So they're raising their own goats for that purpose. And this is the goat fence that they use down there. These, the posts that you see are actually cut from a particular plant. And if you stick them in the ground, just like six inches, uh, it won't be long before they're sprouting up on the tops again. And they can actually cut that off and feed it to the goats and then it will sprout again and sprout again. But they'll put these posts in about every six to eight inches for goats. And then they'll plant this cactus uh, in between the posts. That cactus is actually kind of mildly toxic to the goats. And what do the goats do? They stick their heads through and eat that cactus. And it causes two problems. One, they, they'll get sick, and two, they can eat their way out of the fence. So we have these uh, posts every six to eight inches. We have cactus in between, and we have like six strands of barbed wire. And we still have this come up. Every time you see a goat with this contraption around its neck, you knew that goat had gotten out too many times. They have a practice in Haiti where if uh, somebody else's goat gets on your property, you can cut off its ear and send it back home. And that means don't let your goat get back on my property again because it's only got one more ear left. <laughs> and after that, it's mine. Um, so they'll put these on the, on the goat, these little yokes, to uh, keep them from being able to poke their heads through the fence again. That's the trend of the U.S. breeding goat herd for meat goats. It has fallen and flatlined. And we can, we can follow this trend back years and years and years. And it's always the same. It's just level, even as prices continue to rise. And even as I hear about goat producers saying, I'm going to get into goats in a big way because did you see what the price was last week at the sale barn? My explanation for this is because it's stinking hard to raise goats. Um, and I hear a lot of people say, I'm going to get into goats in a big way. And later on, I think they got out of goats in a big way. The fact that we're still raising goats uh, after starting in 2012 doesn't mean we're geniuses. It probably just means that we didn't grow up with cattle, which would have been a lot easier, or we didn't grow up with sheep. And so we kind of just stuck it out, and we've had a lot of heartbreaks and a lot of losses ourselves. And if it wasn't for the additional revenue that we get from goats on the go from doing our targeted grazing operation, we probably would have been out of goats a long time ago. 
It's only actually been recently that our profit from selling meat goats has started to approach uh, the profit from doing our targeted grazing operation for customers. One of the challenges of goats is that we can't just treat them like other animals. We can't just treat them like sheep. We can't just treat them like cattle. And especially compared to cattle, this is illustrative of one of the big differences. Uh, we have multiple births with goats, which is a great thing. I explained in the last session that uh, we need one of those just to pay her expenses for the year. And the second one might get us a profit. So a third is a headache, but I'll take it. I love the, the way she looks in this picture. It's like kind of sort of happy, sort of happy about these three, but now I got to take care of them. I think this is one of the most frustrating parts about raising goats for me is just the mystery. Um, how many times there's a death that just goes unexplained. Uh, that drives me and my partner crazy because we both are learners. So if something bad happens, we want to make sure that we learn something from it. And so many times the goats don't give you that satisfaction. All right. Thanks so much. I've kept you a little bit late. I really appreciate you staying and listening. <laughs>